So welcome back to Verna's blog. The University of Alberta acknowledges that we are located on Treaty 6 territory and the Métis homeland, and respects the histories, languages, and cultures of First Nations, Métis Inuit, and all First Peoples of Canada, whose presence continues to enrich our vibrant community. It's a pleasure to welcome Jessica Butt-Scott, who is our inaugural Associate Vice President for Online and Continuing Education. Uh, online continuing education is a very important aspect of our university. We know that, what we had to do during COVID, as we know with the online teaching, but it's a real pleasure to, um, to bring Jessica on board because she is an expert in this area. So I know I can introduce Jessica in terms of what she's done, but I'm gonna ask her to tell you herself as to where she comes from and what her expertise is and why we're so excited to have her join us here at the U of A. So Jessica? Sure, thank you Verna, and thrilled to be here, be a part of Verna's vlog. So I come to the University of Alberta from Athabasca University, where I, I was there for about 10 and a half years, and really focused on, of course, online education. I worked at Athabasca University and held different positions, so things starting out in the School of Business, where I formulated corporate partnerships, really through online education and bringing education into the corporate organization. I then moved into supporting student recruitment and also forging institutional partnerships for AU. And then I moved on to lead an entrepreneurial award-winning unit called Power Ed. And what Power Ed really focused on was micro-learning, on-demand learning for professionals looking to upskill, reskill, and also providing support for organizations that were looking to build skills, all delivered online through online modality. What we also did was we worked with other post-secondary institutions to build credit programs, especially during the pandemic, when they were looking for opportunities to expand offerings of course, because they had to, into online learning. So we helped other institutions drive their online learning strategy as well. So I'm thrilled to be here at the U of A and bring knowledge and also learn uh, from leaders at the U of A and really drive forward the online and continuing education strategy. So one of the things I learned from you very early in yeah. our conversations was that, you know, when we think about online continuing education, it's not just about putting slides that you can see online, that there actually is a methodology and a pedagogy uh, behind that. I don't know if we wanted to share with the audience about what that is. For sure. So just in thinking about online learning, um, you know, during the pandemic, it was very different where overnight we had to move to emergency-based remote teaching and learning. And oftentimes people hear me talk about there's a big difference between that and purpose-built online learning, where the learner is at the center of the design. We're focused on quality assurance. We're focused on multimodal, bringing programming to life. We're also focused on the community of inquiry, which really looks at the cognitive presence, the teacher presence, and the learner presence. And that builds an exceptional online experience. So yes, there is a methodology that we go through when building online learning. And online learning is to the instructional designer like laws to the lawyer, like pharmacies to the pharmacist. And so it really is a practice of study. So Jessica, you've been to a lot of different groups across campus talking to them about what you're doing. And I can say uniformly, everyone's really excited yes. about your presence, but we, you are also just a small but mighty team. Yes. So maybe just share with uh, the audience about what are sort of priorities for you right now and how are you thinking about the next year or so? Sure, so priorities for us, right, um, a short-term priority that we're working on right now is with faculty to build out, purpose-built online programming for high enrollment undergraduate courses. And so we're working with academic content creators to create that access and to create more opportunity for undergraduate students to enroll in these courses. Uh, this will also form a first year online. So we're looking at launching a handful of courses this fall, which is really exciting. We're also working with faculties that were funded through the Government of Alberta micro-credential uh, call for proposals. So how to take those from ideation, proposal stage, that gain funding into actual implementation and launching those 
you know, to the community. Another area that we're quite focused on with our small and mighty team is over the coming months, I want to create an integrated space to highlight all professional development and continuing education across our institution. So right now we do make it a bit challenging for individuals and organizations to see what do we offer. They have to dig through multiple pages. So how can we create an integrated space? And then finally, what we want to do is partner with colleges and faculties to help mobilize growth. So as they set growth targets for programming, how can our team be an enabler to help our faculties achieve their growth targets? And I think being an enabler is really key, right? Mm -hmm. To provide the right support. You truly are a center of expertise. Mm -hmm. And how do you actually share that knowledge uh, with the community so that whatever is developed is developed with quality, right? Yes, absolutely. And I'd say online learning is, is here to stay. I mean, we, we saw this post-pandemic that we're living differently, we're working differently, we're learning differently. The industry itself has grown exponentially. So when you look at all of online learning, it's projected to be an industry of $645 billion in 2030, up from about $215 billion in 2021. So this is not going anywhere. And we can make huge inroads, especially when it comes to continuing education, thinking about different ways to deliver upskilling and reskilling for organizations for competitive advantage, help companies foster cultures of learning, where learning is done in the flow and on the job that can be delivered through online means. And then for individuals that wanna upskill and reskill, but they wanna be more in control of their learning journey and online learning enables them to do that. And from the online side, what really excites me, what I'm very passionate about is access. So with online, we can now bring the University of Alberta to the learner. We're not you know, tied by geographic bounds, whether it's in rural, remote, northern communities, globally, we have the opportunity to do that. And one of the things that you had mentioned about reaching out with different communities and working with different companies is that I know recently you had signed a new contract with the Rick Hansen Foundation. Yes. And that's great news. You wanted to share some of what that is? Sure. So really excited about this new partnership with the Rick Hansen Foundation, in part because our values align so, so well between the University of Alberta and the Rick Hansen Foundation that's very much focused on inclusivity, accessibility. And the Rick Hansen Foundation, their mission and, and vision is really focused around creating an inclusive world for people with disabilities. And so as part of that creation of an inclusive world, what they're focused on is around education and educating the public around accessibility, around language when it comes to disabilities. And they have a number of face-to-face -face programs that they offer. And so what the Rick Hansen Foundation realized is that we need to go broader, we need to go wider and create larger awareness around what we're offering. And so to do that, they were looking for a partner to deliver and develop purpose-built online programming. And we're so excited about partnering with the Rick Hansen Foundation. We will be building micro on-demand courses that will launch this summer, both in English and in French. And this is a partnership that could really expand um, beyond online and continuing education into other avenues across the University of Alberta. And making an impact in an area that uh, needs so much support and, and exactly. help, right? Exactly, absolutely, yeah. yep. Um, the other group I know that you are forming a partnership with is Nunavut. Yes, we are. So with the government of Nunavut, they are very focused on building skills, building competencies in leadership development. And so with continuing education and with government of Nunavut, of course, having employees that are rural and remote, they needed to look to online learning to support the education. So we've fostered a partnership that's been very successful on helping to build those competencies around leadership development. And I think for me, this is about, you know, the impact of the U of A yes. beyond the U of A border. So, so pleased with that, Jessica, and so pleased with the work that you're doing also internally um, with our faculties. I have to say that I did apologize 
to the provost at Athabasca for <laughs> taking you away from them because I know that uh, you were such an asset to them also. But he was actually very happy for you, Jessica. Yes. And he said to me that um, he was very pleased because he thought that joining the University of Alberta was a good move for you. So with that, thank you, Athabasca. Um, <laughs> I want to thank Jessica. She's been just an incredible, incredible person for us to lead the online continuing education for the University of Alberta. So thank you so much, Jessica. Thank you very uh, much. And thanks to all of you for watching.